it's going to be very tempting to use AI as a weapon. It's going to be very tempting. In fact, it will be used as a weapon. The danger is going to be more humans using it against each other, I think most likely. That'll be the danger. Artificial intelligence is the greatest threat to society, and it's a lot closer than people think. Actually, it's already here, affecting our lives and all of society, but it's about to be weaponized, and nobody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about FaceApp, and this is the precursor to what is coming. Luckily, this was a good, happy, fun one, where you got to post pictures of yourself being old. Fun, wow. Wow. Then it came out that our data might have got stolen, and everybody's freaking out. Oh no, our data. Oh, I, I cared about that. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I care about it because it might be used to manipulate me someday. No, you don't care about it, okay? And you're already being manipulated. So how much worse could it really get? All right, I got a little carried away. It can get a lot worse and that's what this video is about. And there are probably like 10 people that do care about their data who are on a Linux machine on public Wi-Fi who walked there using Tor. If you're that guy, sorry, I, I will respect that you respect your privacy. Now, nobody's focusing on the real story here though. That's artificial intelligence. Nobody's saying, wow, look at how revolutionary this is and that it might like have massive impacts. Instead, everybody's like, the Russians. What are the, what are the Russians gonna do? We're the ones tearing ourselves apart in the social media systems. Like, yeah, the Russians could come and throw some monkey wrenches in it, but so could Steve from Iowa. By the way, this is not a political video. They probably did take data, but here's the thing. Who gave it to them? You did. We did. And then how did they get it? Like who collected the data and gave it to them? Facebook and Google. And then if they manipulate us, how would they do that on Facebook and Google? Like that is the main problem here. And then how would they distribute it or get it to you? They would buy ads or the algorithm would push it to you and they would know ways to manipulate you. But the thing is, is like that's already happening on a daily basis. So we've got to talk about the real problem here. We can't trust images anymore. We can't trust text anymore. The only things that we have left are audio and video. That's basically the only senses and the ways we, we learn and everything. We learn everything from social media. And what gets shown on these social media platforms is literally determined by algorithms, which are the world's largest artificial intelligence already. And they're optimized for the worst things, basically. And that's the problem is when we're being optimized for the worst, lowest common denominator stuff. And now pretty soon, we're not going to be able to trust anything that we see on the internet because you can fake anything soon. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. So... Elon is afraid. I'm afraid now. It took me a year to really understand what he was saying. So we're going to show this. It's 40 seconds, okay? He talks kind of complex. And then we're going to explain what he said and show some examples of what just happened with FaceApp here. And what's upcoming next. And that's where the real danger is. A company is essentially a cybernetic collective of people and machines. There's this sort of like a collective AI in the Google sort of search where we're all sort of plugged in as like like nodes on the network, like leaves on a big tree. We're all feeding this network. We're all collectively programming the AI. And Google, plus the, all the humans that connect to it, are one giant cybernetic collective. This is also true of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these social networks. They're giant cybernetic collectives. All the things that we like and hate and fear, they're all there on the internet. They're, they're a projection of our limbic system. The success of these online systems is the function of of how much limbic resonance they're able to achieve. The more limbic resonance, the more engagement. All right, so what did he just say? Basically, we're all a part of the world's largest artificial intelligence network. And that essentially, these are all optimizing for, what was that, our limbic resonance. Yeah, you probably didn't understand it either. So I went to Wikipedia, don't worry. Basically, it means the more dopamine or the more norepinephrine that they produce, the longer you stay on the platform and the more money they make. This means that fear, anxiety, tribalism, sadness, injustice, crazy and unbelievable and funny is incentivized on these platforms. So essentially, this is what you look like if you are on social media. This is what they decide to push to you. Anything of these emotions, they know you're gonna love it. And the more you love it, the more money they make. That's how this whole system works. So essentially, the entire system is just built to make you jacked and you're gonna love it. Now, the problem with this is that it's not good for your health or society to be jacked all the time. And these are companies, so they have to make money. Literally, they're optimizing for the most amount of time that you spend on the platform. Facebook is optimized for engagement and sharing and liking and all of that stuff. And then YouTube is optimized all for watch time. They don't really care if you comment that much, but they just wanna see what is gonna make you click and stay on the platform, because that's how they make money. Now, the other problem is how much data they collect on you, okay? 
because they know absolutely everything they know what will trigger you because they have everybody's data and all the data points of what triggers and gets other people jacked too this is the data google has on me 4197 emails they have every location that i've ever been through my maps every website that i've ever been to and how long i spent there all eight phones that i've ever owned and what i've done on them for exactly how long every calendar event I've ever made, every contact I've ever made, 864 apps that I've ever downloaded, and everything that I've ever watched on YouTube, exactly what I clicked, what I did not click, and how long I spent on it. I have no choice but for them to show me what I'm going to watch. Also, they look through your emails and they know what you've bought. And then additionally, they go out and they buy data from credit card companies to tie together to what you have and what you're buying. So they know basically everything about you. Now, the problem when they have all this data is they put you into these eco chambers based upon your data and other people that are similar to you. So let me show you what that looks like. This is what eco chambers look like. And each one of these circled area is maybe one of your types of interest. OK, so if you're interested in science, you're interested in technology technology or you're interested in making money online or whatnot. Those are the only topics that you're going to get shown. Now, what the big problem is, is that what rises to the top in each one of these areas is the one that is the most sensational, the most angry, the most crazy. So in every area of interest, you're basically just seeing the top garbage. That's what wins. All right, so it's not all garbage. There is some good stuff to it, but it's not really good representation of the world. So the best way that I can show this to you is through examples. And then once you understand how this whole system works, you'll see where the potential danger exists in the future once manipulation is extremely easy to use. Politics is probably the worst example. If you're wondering why the world is more angry and divided than ever, this explains why. So we have these eco chambers in here. Maybe Republicans are over here and Democrats are over there. And basically when you're decided as one one of these now it's just going to keep pushing you more and more content in here but the worst rises to the top so now you're just seeing more extreme and more extreme out there so that's why donald trump has become more and more to the right and then these other people on the left have become more and more to the left and there's basically nothing left so maybe when we are over here before now we're over here where there's basically nothing in the middle uh for everybody to agree on and it's just like what the heck is going on in society we're so divided now well this is why to make this matter worse, when you're on one side, you won't even be shown content on the other side, so you can't even see the other viewpoints. This doesn't just happen to politics, and I want to show you one more niche before we move on and show you the potential danger of where we're going, and that's going to be the online money-making niche, and that's the one that I'm in, so I know what works and what doesn't, and I've seen it all, so I'll show you that now. Look at this. Earn $300 by typing names online, available worldwide. Make $25 to $150 in your first hour. Best ways to make money is broke beginners. But my favorite is this one. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make quick money in one day online. And by quick money, it's gonna be big money. I'm not gonna show you some way to make five or 10 or $20 oh in a day. God. I'm gonna show you how to make big money. And I'm gonna walk money. you through step by step right here on my computer exactly what you need to do to get it. These are just basically all of this is just has to be outrageous, simplest, easiest, and guess what? Probably inaccurate. Now, there are lots of sensible, critical thinking people in this world like me, but the problem is you do not see them because they're not outrageous and tribalist like that or, or, or just like pure nuts. That's what is rising in every single vertical. Where this really gets dangerous is with trends, and that's why we're talking about FaceApp because trends are where things get dangerous and misinformation is abundant. So when a big trend trend happens, all of the influencers have to make content about it right away. And so do the newspapers. Everybody does because it's very profitable because they all make money off of views. Now, the problem with this is it's whoever makes it the first and the most outrageous is going to get the views. So basically, whenever a new trend comes out, Whatever you're reading is probably wrong, and it happened with this face app situation. Now, before the controversy came out and Russians potentially stealing data, why was it a trend in the first place? Because it was a new artificial intelligence that was outrageous and crazy, and that you saw like, wow, I could make myself look old. Now, the other influencers had to hop on the trend because they wanted to stay relevant, and you know, they got to go get those views too. Now, the entire controversy started because one senator made one tweet that said the FBI needed to investigate this company because it was owned by Russian people. Like it could have honestly just been some guy who made an app that was successful, but because he was Russian, now they made that tweet. And then everybody thought, well, the Russians before have done this, so they're gonna steal our data again. And then now everybody was like, whoa. And then all these influencers started to make posts about it saying, hey, watch out, the Russians are stealing your data. And then now it self-perpetuates. Guess what? A couple of days later, 
comes out, oh wait, they're not actually stealing your photos. And that's what everybody was concerned about. They are taking some of your other data. Now that's the actual truth. But the problem is the truth takes a long time to actually come out and make a good case for. Like this video is taking me a while to make. That doesn't get out right away in a trend. And that's why you'll never see the truth immediately. To make things worse, most of the time the truth is not controversial and engaging, so you almost never see it. That's what that's what the tragedy of this whole system is. And that's why I'm making this video, and that's why this is a bit fearful, because normally I don't hop on trends or anything like this or use fear. But this is a major problem, probably the biggest problem that we face in society today. So I'm making that. So now that you understand how this whole system works, we'll show you how deep fakes could potentially be used to just throw a giant monkey wrench in this, and it's gonna be accessible to just about everybody soon. So that Obama clip that I showed you guys earlier in the video actually wasn't real. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. Jordan Peele created this fake video of President Obama to demonstrate how easy it is to put words in someone else's mouth. That was a complicated one to pull off and took a lot of work, but things are becoming a lot more advanced now. They've just been able to do Joe Rogan's voice where you can basically type in what you want and make Joe Rogan say whatever you want. Hey Joe Rogan, it's me, Joe Rogan. Please come save me, man. These artificial intelligence guys have trapped me in a machine. This is going to be crazy going into the future. We're not going to be able to trust audio or video. And right now, I really don't trust much text or most content from people either because of how the trends work and how text works. So there's one more part of the puzzle here, which is where do we get most information from and where do most things actually originate? Most stories originate from a newspaper, an event, or from a scientific study. If you know how to manipulate one of the pieces of this puzzle, you can completely change the social narrative. What is driving the internet crazy? Starting with Justin Bieber. This is how he eats a burrito. JB chowing down on a burrito like it's a corn cob. That was completely fake. Yes, Siri did an experiment to see, hey, could we get the world to believe that Justin Bieber ate a burrito in a really weird way with just one photo, and they got it to happen. Scientific studies have also been proven to be wrong. There was some scientists who did, submitted a fake, completely made-up study to a feminist journal say, stating that male dogs would, I can't say this because I'll get demonetized, but would force themselves upon female dogs at the dog park, and that this was inherent culture among all mammals that male are bad. Even some scientific journals are not trustworthy. They released an email chain going back and forth and it showed that they had some studies that they faked to them that they wanted to release, but they weren't uh, anti-feminist enough. Uh, so they didn't get them out there or they helped encourage them to make them more feminist. And they did publish some of the other ones. This is not anti-feminist video, but I'm just saying that everybody has an intention in life. So you need to be very careful. What are the intentions behind everything? There are plenty of anti-climate change science studies and there's plenty of pro-climate change studies that are both wrong as well. This happens among every area across basically everything. Everybody has their own interests in mind. One of the biggest problems is news these days. Fake news is actually a real thing, and it's because of Facebook and because of these eco chambers, and I just want to explain how that works. Newspapers and journalists used to make money by doing really good reporting and having people read it and enjoy it. It worked great. When a journal would post on Facebook, the time on the platform would go down and the time on the newspaper would go up. And this would make the newspaper money, but it would make Facebook less money. Then around 2016 with the whole fake news incident and Facebook just wanted to make money, let's be honest. They said, okay, we're gonna not share news anymore. So all these newspapers now got deranked on Facebook. So how the heck could they make money anymore? Well, basically. Basically what they had to resort to was the most outrageous things that people would share and talk about all around the world. So now with these eco chambers too, they just have to make the most outrageous thing for each eco chamber. So we're all just seeing crazy stuff that's probably not real. And because of trends, they have to post it really fast. If you go to any newspaper page on Facebook, you'll just see that it's just pure outrage and garbage. Now the core root of this problem is all these social media platforms. They're all optimized for outrage and how fast and relevant you are on these trends and just in general. This is very dangerous. You need to be very careful with what you're looking and if you trust it. You need to look back, see where did it come from? Is that a trustworthy source? And like really reverse engineer it. And the truth takes a long time to get to. You can't be a headline reader and you can't just take things that you hear from face value. Even if it's from somebody you like and trust, you need to think what are their intentions? How much time and effort did they put into this? Are they a domain expert? 
expert in this? Do they actually understand how this works? And are they just doing this for money or to hop on it or give you like info? Or, uh, you know, is this like something they're passionate about and really trying to get out the truth if it's something that is important? But if it's just memes, you can just watch them. You don't need to worry if they're real or not. <laughs> So apparently burping is funny today. <laughs> Artificial intelligence can be a wonderful thing. And it can also be a weapon. I've been on some of the dark sides of the internet and recently I've seen it weaponized. It hasn't come out yet, but it is coming. So just, I want everybody to just be aware of this issue because it will affect our society. It will affect your life. Unfortunately, I don't know how to solve this problem. These platforms, this is proven to be the best way to make money. And the content creators on these platforms, that's the proven way to make the most money. But unfortunately, like less than 1% of people are actually making critical thought out really helpful information. And that's what I do on this channel. I create well thought out unbiased content with everybody's best intentions in mind. And I think that's what more of the world needs to be talking about the things that are important and to help each other. So if you guys want to leave a subscription, I would appreciate it. And when I post a video, I really care about it. And I guarantee that it's worth your time to listen. I try to convince people to slow down slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. This seems Nobody like a listened. scene in a movie Nobody where listened. the robots are gonna fucking take over and you're freaking me out. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. No one. Are people more inclined to listen today? It seems like an issue that's brought up more often over the last few years than it was maybe five, ten years ago. It seemed like science fiction. Maybe they will. So far, they haven't.